Thank you. Senator Hawley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks to all of the witnesses for being here. Chairman Phillips, let me just start with you. Let me start in my home state of Missouri and St. Louis. The Spire Pipeline in St. Louis, as you probably know, has had a long and uh, somewhat unhappy saga until recently. Finally, in December of this past year, the Commission gave the pipeline a certificate to operate. I'm asking you about it because, as I'm, I hope you know, residents of the St. Louis area have been repeatedly told that their gas bills would rise in a very significant way if the pipeline was not able to operate. Can you give me some assurance that the, Saint, the Spire pipeline in St. Louis will continue to be authorized for the foreseeable future? Senator, as you know, we handle pipeline certifications on a case-by-case -case basis. We have a public interest obligation and determination to be made. Uh, we take them as they come. Uh, my understanding is that uh, I will double check to make sure with my staff to see what the status is uh, of Spire in particular, but that is the way we approach pipelines, and I support that case-by-case case, case approach. Okay, good. Well, if you could get back to me, that would be helpful. I want to make sure that this pipeline, which has is now FERC approved, continues to operate and that we don't see major disruptions in service for the for the residents of the St. Louis region. Let me ask you about rural co-ops. My state is a majority rural state. Uh, our rural electric co-ops are a hugely important part of our energy grid in the state of Missouri. They have been facing major supply chain issues, in particular uh, the purchasing of new transformers. Tell me what you're doing to help keep prices down for rural electric co-ops. Again, we have a number of reforms that we're moving forward right now. A huge part, and I think affordability is addressed in some of our reforms right now, and it will benefit the country. The more resources that we can bring on, I believe we can help in the long term lower prices for consumers. Great. Well, I, I want to make sure that we keep the price of electricity affordable, and again, especially in our rural areas in the state, especially working with rural electric co-ops. That's a huge priority. I look forward to working with you on that. Um, let me turn to Commissioner Clements. Let me ask you... Some emails disclosed last year via a FOIA request showed that you briefed a funders-only session at a left-leaning grant-making foundation called the Energy Foundation about FERC 2022 priorities. Who were the donors who attended that session? The, the, there, were not, there was not fundraising in the uh, meeting you ask about. It was a convening of foundation staff um, from across the country and I was having a very kind of straightforward, above-the-board conversation about 2022 priorities. Um, subject to my ethics agreement and any ex parte restrictions, I have an open-door policy, so I meet with all kinds of stakeholders. I've actually never said no to a meeting between either my staff taking it or, or myself. Wait, wait, wait a minute. You, you, said it was, you said it was staff? The, 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 the FOIA information says it was a fund advertised as a funders-only session. The, donors. The, I'm not sure. It wasn't an advertised thing. There are foundations that work together. It was briefed as a funders-only session, meaning that there were donors there. So who were the donors? I, I think it's important to understand that what my role to do is engage with, with these stakeholders. When I was invited to present to a group of foundation staff, just like when I'm invited to present to the board of... I, I don't understand what you You keep using the word staff. The information says that there were funders present. There were donors. I want to know who the donors are. I, who were the donors? I, I'm, I'm, you give me a list? I'd be happy to. I Good. don't remember specifically, but I'd be happy to. Good. Was there money raised at the event that you spoke at? No. What were the FERC 2022 priorities that you spoke with this donor group about? I gave my standard uh, speech that I give when I speak to any convening of stakeholders who participate in the sector. You use stakeholders now several times. Does that include industry donors? Is that a definition of stakeholder now? Our major donors? Yeah. I think Do you think it's appropriate that you would be giving closed door briefings to donors? No, and I didn't do that, sir. The the What do you mean you didn't do it? That this is this is the information says that it was a funders event. It was a funders only session I'm not at a at a, a a foundation that raises money from donors. I provide my stump speech on my own FERC priorities to many different kinds of groups. Donors? Any convening. Some of them might be donors in any capacity. Um, certainly, Did I... Did any of those donors who were present that day have a financial interest in the industry, energy industry? Almost everyone I speak to has a financial interest in the energy industry. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is a normal practice of yours to speak to groups that have financial interests interest in your industry? 
So when I go and I talk to the board of EPSA or the EEI CEOs or the interstate pipeline member companies, all of whom I have spent time with, the idea is that subject to ethical responsibilities and also my ex parte restrictions, I engage with them. I tell them my priorities. Do, I get their do you think it's appropriate, my time is running out here, do you think it's appropriate to speak to advocacy groups at a donors only session? Do you think that that's appropriate? I think it is appropriate to speak with foundations who are interested in the energy. To their space. donor sessions? Wow. Wow. I have to say, I, I think that that's pretty problematic. I would like a list of the donors. Uh, I'd like to know who was there. Um, I'm concerned about this, what you've now described as a practice, pattern and practice of speaking to donor groups that have financial interests in the industry you are regulating. I think that's a big problem. If that's not currently foreclosed by law, we ought to foreclose it, Mr. Chairman. But you said that you do this on a regular basis. We'll probably follow up. I'm, I think I'm probably going to need to see a list of all the groups you've spoken to. I'm going to want to know the donors that you've spoken to. I am extremely, extremely disturbed by what you have just told me. And at a time when we have major ethics issues, you know, we've got members of Congress buying and selling stock based on information that only they are privy to. We've got members of the executive branch who are buying and selling stock in industries that they regulate, and now we've got you speaking to donors uh, in, in industries that you regulate. Senator, thank um, you. That's a problem. Thank you. That's a problem, Mr. Chairman.